future uh, policies would be in place, as you know, I was uh, also for the committee. of the committee provides an update on absence levels in the organisation. A summary of how absence is being monitored and the next steps in trying to reduce levels of sickness absence within the council. Our absence levels run around 11 days per FTE consistently, as high as we want them to be, and this requires the area of the organisation. This is important uh, both in relation to our duty of care to the workforce as an employer, but also in terms of finances and productivity. High absence levels of high performance services, they cost more to deliver, and ultimately it's rural residents who are impacted. The report in front of you sets out some organisational context, which is important when analysing data. At the 31st of December 2018, the council had around 3,200 employees, um, and the number of employees has decreased by around 2,000 since 2010. We've done this over a, a there were three different initiatives over the years, voluntary leaders program, a reduction in management costs and service cuts in 2013-14, a major restructure program uh, in 2014-15, and um, in the last couple of years also some service redesign and integration with the NHS, which has seen um, certainly a couple of hundred people from our social care department leave uh, and transfer to the NHS. So it's been a fairly un uh, unprecedented period of change and one in which uh, the model for delivery of many of our services has changed. The report does state that while there's no evidence or correlation with increased acceptance levels, the reduction in resource uncertainty has increased, increased pressure on team services and individuals. 2015-16, staff sickness absence was at its highest level since 2010-11, and took 11 and a half days. Um, and 2017-18, it was 11.12 days. The projections for 2018-19 indicate a slightly decrease to around about 10.97 days. During this period, um, the, the procedures that we have in place for collecting sickness data have improved greatly, um, which potentially has the impact of increasing the accuracy of current absence levels. We don't know what we don't know, but we, we suspect that there's some underreported previous years as well of some absence levels. So the report then um, looks at how we compare. So table one on page 28 of the bundle shows the performance of council in comparison to other local authorities in the northwest. These figures are published annually, so 1718 is the last full year we have available. Uh, the council is around six in the table of 13 local authorities uh, with 11.12 days as I say. While it's helpful to look at other councils, um, it should be noted that each authority has its own different models of delivery, including outsourced and alternative delivery model uh, vehicles for many services like waste, leisure and social care, which does have an impact on what the workforce looks like in terms of sickness levels. So it's not comparing absolutely like we like. The CIPD survey 2018 states that the average days lost in public sectors are around eight and a half days, and the average for local authorities in the table uh, on page 28 is 10. So the report on page 29 looks at um, the reasons for absence and shows that in the 12 months up to December 18, uh, the most amount of time was lost due to mental health with 37% of all absence mental health related. Uh, having said that, mental health was only the third biggest single reason in terms of employees off sick, but it's the most lost days because uh, they tend to be longer absences. Um, it is important to note the definition of mental health related absence for the council. So it covers a multitude of different issues actually. So it can include, include anxiety, anxiety, bereavement, dementia, depression, fatigue, insomnia, manic depression, nervous disorders, personal problems. Quite often a GP note will just give us one word, which will be anxiety or stress, but there will be other reasons behind that. Um, we acknowledge that some further work is, is required in our occupational health provider to try and categorise that in terms of stress, work related or home related or combination of both. So that's something that we want to look at. Um, 2018, there was a, just under 1,800 employees off sick from work due to sickness and around 20% of those uh, due to mental health related conditions. The average lost, day for, lost days for mental health is just over 35 days. 
and of those 348 employees, 20% um, around two, about 77 percent of those were due to anxiety, stress, or depression. And the only the table three on page 30 of the bundle shows that the only illness that results in a larger average amount of days absent is the mental health is cancer. Okay, just moving on, paragraphs 217 to 222 in the pack um, show that the council's position is, is comparable and reflects the experience of other organisations across various sectors. Um, I think it's fair to say that you know, mental health is a challenge for all fairly large organisations. Um, we know that absence comes at cost, and um, for us it's um, somewhere in the region of 3, 3, 3 million a year. Um, and that was based on the cost of paying employees who are sick, not necessarily the cost of cover. Um, the requirements for cover does vary across the council, so we're not able to categorise that. Um, we're also able to analyse sickness by direction, and that's in Table 4 on pages 31 and 32, um, which shows the performance by each directions within the council. So, just moving on to um, what, what we're doing. Um, table 5 on page 33 shows that um, we've looked at the CIPD survey, what tools of other organisations have been willing to manage um, short term and long term absence. And it shows that in the main we've got a lot of the same approaches in place, a lot of the same tools in place to try and manage sickness absence um, as, as the 670 organisations that responded to the survey. Um, section 3 then moves into a little bit about what action we've been taking in more detail. So, over the past couple of years, Council's undertaken a wide range of interventions and programmes um, to try and um, address sickness absence levels. Um, breaking those into areas, training. So, there's a, a large ongoing programme of land manager training, uh, initially in response to an audit report which highlighted some areas of our compliance with policy and procedures. And around 250 sessions have been delivered by managers by HR team over the past 12 months. We've commenced the program of mental health first aid training in the last three months. Um, and there's been delivered to 32 managers already, and there's two courses planned for the next um, couple of months as well. And that training is, is quite powerful and is looking to equip managers with the knowledge and skills on how to identify, understand, and help both themselves but also people who may be experiencing mental health issues. We've done a lot of work around management information and data that's available. Um, so we have really quite detailed data on sickness now. Uh, every line manager in the organisation has access on their desktop to detailed sickness information about their team. Uh, that goes to the ITs and senior managers. Our HR business partners attend those department management teams to discuss sickness absence trends and issues. And there's a monthly operational health report that goes to the council senior leadership team. Um, over the past 18 months or so, we've dedicated some HR reserve, uh, resources to uh, dedicated to absence management, some additional resource that's focused primarily on long-term cases. And um, we've seen some success in, in reducing the number of long-term cases across the, the council through that uh, intervention. In October 17, for example, there were 18 employees in the council were absent for work for more than a year. By October 18, so October 17 and October 18, this is reduced to six employees. So, in an organisation this size, we always expect to be a small number, uh, and we felt that um, that was a you know, number that, that we needed to, to look into and, and address. The team also looked to um, proactively audit and drive compliance. So, for example, we tend to work interviews that managers are required to undertake. We've increased that from 67% to 82% um, through, again, HR being more proactive and being able to check with managers who are up to and identify gaps um, <coughs> from our reports. Um, we move into a bit around a wider discussion around sickness absence in the report. Um, there's undoubtedly a policy element to what we do, and making sure our policies and frameworks are in place. But what we also need to do is look at how we promote health and well-being and create an environment where that helps employees to stay in work rather than be off sick. Um, and that's it's quite difficult to measure, but there's a whole range of interventions there that we've set out in paragraph 3.12 of the reports, which includes employee volunteering, which you've introduced now, lots of employee-led activities, 
and that, uh, if you look on the internet now, there's stuff going on you know, most days, most weeks, there's running, the yoga, the different things, there's a, a choir that's been introduced. These are all the things that we can't correlate to people staying at work, but the things that we're trying to promote health and well-being, and, and people are obviously taking a break from work, etc., etc. Um, public health campaigns, um, we tag on to the programme events from public health and make sure that uh, we um, target our own staff for that, whether that's alcohol, uh, drugs, different, different initiatives each month, mental health. Um, and our latest leadership conference in January uh, was focused on health and well-being and that was a priority objective. And finally, section four of the report just considers what, what next. So we need to continue the training, continue mental health training, for the refresh and relaunch, some of the learning modules that we have around stress management and stress risk assessments, roll out to two day health and safety training for managers. Um, we've got a new occupational health contract that we're due to uh, commence in April. And we've looked particularly to the providers there to be more proactive in some of the surgeries and some of the work that they put on with the staff as well as I'm great embracing the kind of latest technology through arms and central to promote health and well-being. We will um, review our policy, which is something that we do uh, routinely anyway, to, to see if that can be improved in any way. And our absence, performance <coughs> staff's absence is regularly audited. So our internal audit, um, our auditing, probably once every 12 months to 18 months, to look at managing, line managing compliance with absence, absence levels, So in conclusion, the report sets out the current position in relation to sickness absence. It does show a hope that there's a significant work being undertaken, but that improvement in this area is a priority. Um, the benchmark information and research from outside the organisation demonstrates that we're facing the same challenges as many organisations, particularly the public sector, and specifically in relation to the levels of mental health and wellbeing, which is a challenge. Thank you, Chair, for taking questions. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you for that detail of the report. Thank you for the report. Questions? Councillor Sammy, thoughts? Thanks, Chair. Uh, Tommy, I've got lots of questions. It seems to have been specifically asked for this in the name, but they're under the headings really of the current position, the systems that we've got in place, and also plan of action, scope, and targets. So we start with the current position. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the understatement, which is, the, the, and this is a paramount importance, which we, why we need to address it, and uh, try to reduce absence as best we can. Uh, high absence levels affect the performance of services, they cost more to deliver, and ultimately it's will of residents who are impacted. And but clearly, that is exactly why we need to reduce uh, it as best we can. So, the estimated cost was 4.3 million in 17 and 18, which is an outstanding amount of money. We have to find. Now, it, it is, I will start by saying it's commendable the fact that what 1718 we were on 11.12 days and it, has, it is projected to be going in the right direction. But if you look across the bar charts, really, on verse 27, it's pretty much been stable uh, since 2010. And I will imagine if you, if you extended that back into the early 2000s, even 90s, I'll be very surprised that there's much change on that. Um, it, it is very stubborn and stays around the 10, 11 mark regardless. Now, again, the middle of the road with the uh, metrics that you use to measure against the other local authorities. However, if you look at us against the public sector uh, as a whole, so the public sector as a whole, it's the average is 8.5 days around, and then obviously we compare that to the private sector, which is 5.2 days per round. So there's a, we'll, 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 go, we'll go easy on Johnny Zoe, but uh, the first target needs to be, we need to be at least um, on, on par with or below the average public sector, and then moving towards the question of why is it so low in the public, uh, so high in the public sector in comparison to the private sector. But the first target for me needs to be, we need to be at least 10, 8.5. Now I would suggest that we haven't done that well over a decade. Um, then we look at reasons for it. So if you look at um, nationally, so that some of the, all those figures were from the Guardian, by the way, so they must be true. Uh, 
Um, so if we look at 2013, and some figures I managed to pick up, to the archives, 131 million days were lost, um, and 31 million at that point in time were related to um, bad backs and bad necks. Okay. So that was the, the injury of choice, should we say, at that point for anybody who may misuse the system. So at that point in time, there was only 15 million, only 15 million. Uh, the yeah, it's so, all like, yeah. The, yeah, uh, the, the figures, the, the, these are important figures though, which, uh, to, to be fair, because it's, it's making the direct comparison between where we are and where we should be. Uh, because if, if other places were in the public sector, they can achieve better than others like Albert. I'm not even comparing it to the likes of the uh, industry, which is almost.
that's been a bit of an annual process, um, kind of practically undertaken by us to then go and challenge back and find where we're up to, and we'll where things up to. Um, from March, actually, um, just around now, we'll be introducing system alerts that will automatically do that for managers. So um, we think that's going to be a step forward in terms of the management of short term absence. <coughs> means me as a manager, so I've got a base online people who fall directly to me. We'll get an email from the system to say that one of my team has breached the triggers. Uh, it will tell me, but it will also tell me if I don't respond, it will also tell my mind, my manager. So what, what that will hopefully start to do, and the plan is that will start to increase accountability of managers who are not managing absence, which is something we can't do as easily now. So we're using the technology as best we can to enhance it. Similarly, um, if I don't undertake the return to work, um, the system will now flag up that that's not been undertaken. It will remind me and then it will escalate it if it's not done. Because as you've seen from the table there, the return to work is a fairly key tool in managing absence and letting the employee know that the absence has been noted, that, you know, whether there are any concerns and why any concerns we need to be aware of. So, and I want to do a question about the system and what we're using. Um, it does ask about targets and um, and obviously 8.5 is, is, is quite ambitious, ambitious for where we are now. Um, I mentioned in the, in the summary that um, you like to think you know, we've been at 11 for a long time. Um, I do think we're working harder than we've ever done. We've got the organisation's attention. There's a greater push around sickness now at the MT level, the SLT level. Um, so with the interventions we've got in place with the both the well-being strategies, but also the policy improvements that we're looking at. Um, obviously, we're keeping it under really tight uh, in terms of monitoring, reporting it very, very regularly, um, and then obviously look at where the first quarter next year takes us. Um, and it's, I think I said in the report, you know, it's, it's kind of multifaceted. This is not one answer to resolve the sickness absence. So this year we offered three blue jabs for everyone in the organisation. Before that, it was targeted. Now, we won't know whether they're going to be sort of return and actually sort of 10 from 9, 7 from 11, 1 from 1, 2. Is a direct correlation of that? You know, there's a relatively low take, take up, good days. Obviously, it's all these other things add up. So, there's a whole range of different interventions that we're looking to, to put in place. And look at that CIP detail, you know, it's around training, retraining, and making sure managers are absolutely crystal clear. And the final point is just to respond to your question, and so it's just around policy. We will look at policy, we will look at triggers again. It's something that I've alluded to in the reports around looking at what time side they're looking at what others are doing and seeing whether what they've got in place policy wise will fit this organisation. It's not always the case, um, but certainly look at best practice elsewhere. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I want to pick up on
and, and you've done a, a lot of this is quite general where you picked up from Irish or CIBD. Um, but it'd be good to look at perhaps an independent survey that's totally, um, you know, so nobody knows um, who's it's anonymous, if you like, so that nobody knows who's filled in that survey. And that might be done perhaps with you, so, or your occupational health provider. So it is a step in the right direction. Um, but I still think that there's an awful lot of work to be done. Um, and, and I want to check whether we could, whether this is a piece of work that we could be taken up. Um, in the new Venus Olympic year, um, or whether we just need to have further review. Okay, okay. Thanks, Chair. Um, am, am I being in danger of uh, agreeing with, with Tony and saying that you made a few, a few points there that, that I just want to pick up on? It, I think it, the uncertainty around sort of a workforce is obviously negative on, on its performance and its morale. Um, and um, you make the point, um, Tony, that uh, it's been around a decade since um, we've sort of struggled with this kind of 10 or 11 day mark. Um, I can certainly think of something that happened around about a decade ago that may have increased the uncertainty in global authority workforce. Um, and uh, therefore, and therefore um, the uncertainty around people's jobs. So I was just wondering if uh, you noticed uh, a kind of mid to long term increase in the number of uh, sick days and whether any of that is actually related to the more uncertain sort of financial position or local authorities find themselves in. Uh, and I've got another question, a second question if you want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've said the report that it's been difficult to get an absolute correlation between sickness levels and organisational change. I think the accepted wisdom is, yeah, I think Councillor Hawks made reference to it as well, that in uncertain times, you know, people maybe do struggle with the, the, what the future holds, uh, and that may well lead to increased sickness levels. Uh, and the Houston survey I referenced in the report in 2.21, they've done some research on that to suggest that would be the case. Um, as I said, I think we've come a, a significant way in the level of data that we hold and the understanding that we have almost year on year really in terms of organisational sickness. So the the level of data is almost endless, but there is a point around um, kind of GP notes and what we record as absence and the absolute reason. So, you know, take the point around management style um, being, you know, potentially reason why someone might be off, but we've got no real understanding of that because it's unlikely to come to a sick note, it's unlikely to come to an occupation, it may come to an occupational health referral, that there's a relationship with an issue. So, I think we've taken it quite a long way in our understanding. I think the next piece of work for us is with our occupational health provider um, to look at uh, trying to get a better understanding of uh, categories of stress, particularly work related, and understanding when they do see people who've, who've unfortunately gone off, to what, to what extent that is uh, work related and related or a combination of both. My experience as a kind of HR professional over 20 years is quite often a combination of things that people can look going off with, not just one.
and uh, that now stands at 13.5. So I'm just wondering what kind of learning is being done across the council from departments who have been specifically successful in tackling this. Yeah, um, I'm aware of the, the improvements in children's services and that's no doubt been contributed to um, our slight increase in figures as well. It was very high. Um, there were some particular circumstances within that service area over a period of time, um, but predominantly around work environments and case loads. So with the investment we've made in social workers, in trying to get case loads to management better to a manageable level, um, again, quite difficult because some of this is anecdotal, but the feedback we have from, um, from employees and trade unions is that, that, that's got a massive impact on how people feel about work and come to work and whether they can cope. So um, it, it, you know, there's, there's some real good news stories coming out of children and that's one of them. But as I think the investments in resources and case loads is probably the biggest single factor, but as well as um, management attention and um, kind of there was a period of time where we had a lot of agency managers and children's lives more stabilised. So I think that would have a, a positive impact as well on the management of the tenants and how social workers particularly would feel about coming to work. Thank you, Tony. Councillor Jenny Williams. Yeah, just, I mean, yeah, I think there's one point we seem to be ignoring the obvious here, it's the usual selective amnesia of the issues here. I mean, what's causing the great majority of these problems when it's central government? Cuts and two thirds of the council budgets gone. It's quite simple. I mean, oh, look at the serious issues here. The serious issues as well. But I mean, not to even mention it, it's just an absolute. I mean, you know, I appreciate the detail of the board, Tony, but not to mention the obvious. It's just crazy. Yeah, I can't see my rights to apply on that. Uh, yeah, uh, Jay, my God, you do labour. I think you'll find that actually you said the words unprecedented, unprecedented change actually recognise that. Tom uh, uh, tried to just uh, add in some extra comments to my uh, uh, statement before with regards to when we were actually measuring. It's been 9% since I can remember. You, how many years have you been here? You've been here about 30 odd years. You tell me that. You tell me that it, it, it's suddenly, it's it's suddenly, it's suddenly it's increased. It's a low level of the Let's go to the Thank you, Mr. 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 Thank you, and if so, is it not a surprise that the sickness outreach is slightly below that? And would it not change if she took a slight intervention level changed? And that's not to say the management intervention is getting people in and on disciplinary, it's just the intervention level. And it's at the manager's discretion as to whether the employee is swinging the head, or the an issue, or finding personal problems, whatever it might be. Manage the situation. Thank you, Chair. Um, no, I don't, I don't believe that is the case. Um, <coughs> the triggers are there, but there's also a so it's like a fairly standard. I mean, there's an infinite variety of these triggers that we can pick up and take from other policies, and uh, when we put the, the triggers together, um, it's, it's something that we've, we've done some research on. Um, we also are able to identify patterns of absence. So we feel like there's an employee, or the manager feels there's an employee where every time the period elapses, they're, they're able to, to go back off again without sanction. Um, although it's not stated in their policy, absolutely allows for um, that kind of irregular patterns of absence to be picked up. Um, but, yeah, so, so, so actually the, uh, the periods of absence, are, you know, there's, there's a guide there to say you should be issuing warnings uh, or considering issuing warnings um, if these triggers are reached. And if it goes on, on the warning, probably should be less likely to go off in, in the second part of the year. I mean, it's not being bad minded, I think it's just human nature. You know, you, you work out your numbers, you work out where you're at, um, and you can just have a little bit of work. For some people, I mean, we love everybody, but am I right in saying that that's what three separate periods of three working days in any six month period with the calendar? 
two separate periods with houses with three working days, although I was every able to get to the off just above the average signals rate of the council. So, I don't really know that is the case. I mean, it's come back outside the committee and described some more detail of that. Um, but this is an extract from policy, and there's, there's a little bit more around uh, that actual policy itself allows that. Just that bit in isolation allows that. Yeah, I, I don't believe that's the case. Just, just in isolation, that, sorry, just in isolation, those two bullet points there allow that to happen without intervention. Just on those. And so, Chair, just to come back, and what the policy also says is when the manager identifies that that might be happening, then it allows the manager to take action based on concerning patterns of absence. Yes, so well, I'm sure you can see that. Into their 
Um, I think we've got to improve and managed to need to improve around short term absence. Um, and um, I think the, the, the response I gave earlier around some of the system developments will support that and, and really, if you like, put them into that position where there's, we're absolutely clear that we know that the trees have been reached uh, and action is due and that their managers will know that instantly as well. So the system and the technology, I think, will move us on to managers being able to manage their managers in a more accountable way to say, I can see you're not managing options because the system is telling me X, Y, and Z is not done. We've had some elements of that, but not, nothing as sophisticated as we would want. So I think our challenge is around um, short-term options and um, creating management action around that. When do you think you'll be able to give us figures? Say a lot of the economics committee. When do you think you can give us committee figures of um, which would show that downturn that it's actually working the way you were? Possibly the fortune. Thank you for uh, <coughs> yeah. You can see this year that 1718 um, projection, sorry, 1819 projection is 10.97, uh, and that's to be validated. Um, I feel like we're working really hard to stand still at the moment. Some really good things. Um, the long term absence, as I said in, in previous responses, um, we get much better at managing that. And I would hope that would have a positive impact um, over the next year. It takes a little, little bit of while to come to all the figures. Um, and I'll add some of the increased accountability. Obviously, I'm hopeful that next year we'll see a fair reduction in numbers and, and, and we'll look at that kind of reduced targets accordingly. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to uh, go back to the uh, mental health situation and the wellbeing initiatives that you've uh, put in place. Uh, whilst I think that mental health first aid is a very good idea, I don't really think that going to your line manager is a particularly good idea. And there's a lot of things that might be the cause of mental health issues that you wouldn't want to confide in a line manager. One of the things that my employer does, and I work for the public sector, but I work for the NHS, and they've teamed up with an organisation now, so I don't have to go through my employer, nobody does. Uh, there's a salary sacrifice scheme for the cycle to work, uh, or joining a gym, or that sort of thing. But there's also um, a facility for debt management and financial management. That, I think, is the root cause of many stress-related illnesses that go on at the moment, and people can just access that without going via their line manager. Is that something you need to say? That's a new chair. Um, it's something we have in place. So we have an employee assistance program, uh, which is allied to our occupational health um, offer, and under which all employees and their families actually can access 365 um, sorry, to seven report, uh, support around a whole range of issues, including uh, financial, um, bereavement, a uh, whole range of issues, as I say, it's independent of the council, uh, and they can also access six sessions of counselling through that. So we have what sounds like a, quite a similar arrangement in place. Um, the challenge as ever for an organisation like this is making sure everybody's aware of that when they need it. Um, but yeah, we've had an employee assistance programme in place for